I first learned about what was at the time called the perennial philosophy, which simply meant that this notion of two truths and a, you know, a relative truth and a relative world of form and an absolute truth, unmanifest formlessness, and that one was fine for sort of everyday conventional living, and one was a way of waking up, literally waking up to a, a, your true self, an absolute, infinite, eternal, true self. And when I first found out about that, the existence around the world, universally, of this, some version of that belief structure, except what we got in Western education. On the one hand, you would think, you know, it'd be kind of a, a, a joy, because it's like, oh, wow, I, you know, I finally found out something that's incredibly important. And my reaction instead was rage. I was enraged that I had to go all the way through the first 20 years of my life and nobody told me about this. And it's like, what? I mean, wait, what were your people doing? You call this education? And I really was just fuming. I hardly knew what to do with myself. How could an educational system let that go? How could it just miss arguably the single most important kind of truth in existence and call itself education. I mean, you didn't even get this stuff in history classes. So uh, horrifying. And my, um, I've always seen part of, of what I wanted to do was by knowing as much as I could about these individual human disciplines, uh, anthropology, archaeology, psychiatry, law, history, and so on. Um, and using quotes from them and putting together arguments um, that would make it more understandable and believable that there were at least these two modes of knowing, these two ways of uh, seeing the world. Um, and when I, I like to th think that, you know, I had a, a, a small impact on some of this. Um, when I first started writing, if you had an experience of cosmic consciousness, of feeling one with the entire universe in a moment-to-moment -moment fashion in a radiant union with the ground of all being. And you told that to a psychiatrist, you could be locked up. You literally could be committed because that was schizophrenic. That was absolutely you know, insane. And then from that to about 15 years later, I did a book called Transformations of Consciousness. And I um, wanted five co-authors, and all five are from Harvard. And, and all five were as mainstream, as modern, as, you know, this is it, uh, as you could get. And they were all um, pointing out the importance of these modes of knowing, the way that you find them in all cultures, um, and um, with the event of that book, um, every psychiatrist in training at Harvard had to learn the 18 stages of Mahamudra meditation and distinguish it from schizophrenia. So it was sort of like a, you know, a minor victory that, ah, we finally got this into uh, an academic setting to some degree. 
thing is, we have an awful long way to go.